And here is question number 12 of YAC 2025 for the mathematics examination. The theory questions. I'm not feeling too well today, so I'm only going to solve one problem. Um, if the mean and the standard deviation of these numbers x, 2.5, 4y, and 7 are 4 and the square root of 31 divided by 10, respectively, we are asked to find the values of x and y given that x is less than y or y is greater than x. All right, let's get started. One thing you should remember is the formulas. The formula for calculating the mean is what? Given by x bar equal to the summation of all the xi's, meaning x1, x2, x3, we are talking about these numbers, divide by n, n stands for the number of items we have, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But according to the question, the mean is equal to 4. So we have, okay, let me write it to the other side. So let's take the summation, meaning we should add all of them together. We have um, x plus 2.5 plus 4 plus y plus 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Divide by 5, everything equal to 4. Um, what do we need to add here? Um, I can see 4 and 7 will give us 11. This is going to give us that 10.5, right? So x plus y plus 13.5. And this 5, you can cross it over. It will multiply 4, you get 20. Then next, we can take this to the other side by subtracting 13.5 on both sides. So you can see that x plus y will be equal to 20 minus 13.5. 20 minus 13 is seven, and seven minus 0.5 will give us 6.5. So this is 6.5. We have one equation here. Now, this is the standard deviation. Remember the formula for standard deviation? is given by this delta equal to the square root of what? Uh, x minus, all the xi's, you know they are five in number, minus the x by which we have just obtained, everything squared divided by n. This is the formula we are going to use. <laughs> but if you observe, it is equal to this, right? So I think, let me write the formula here. The square root of x i minus x bar everything squared divide by n according to the question this is equal to the square root of tau to one divide by ten yes eventually you can square both sides so you have only x minus x bar divided by n equal to tau to one divide by ten so let me continue here Let's take the first item, which is x minus the x bar. What is the x bar? x bar is equal to four according to the question. So it will be, um, where is it? x minus four squared, don't forget. You add, you take the second one, 2.5 minus four again, also squared. Um, plus four minus four, also squared, plus y minus four, also squared, plus the last one, which is seven minus four, also squared, everything here, divide by five, and this will be equal to what? Honestly, I have to write it here, don't mind me. It must be equal to, Tat to one divided by 10. Remember, both sides have square root, right? So I have canceled the square root. What you are seeing here is what we have to the right. And this tat to one divided by 10 is here. So now let us simplify that one. Um, this remain how it is. It will be x minus four 
whole squared. Let me bring the other one, which is y minus 4 plus y minus 4, also squared. Then what we need to evaluate are these and this, because this is going to give us 0, right? 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 squared is still 0. So let me simplify this too. We have 2.5 minus 4. Everything you get, you should square that. Square. Uh, you have 2.25. 2.25. Then 7 minus 4 uh, is 3. 3 squared is 9. So let me just write 9 here. Everything divide by 5. But should I cross multiply? If you multiply this by 10, you know, if you multiply 5 by 31 divided by 10, you know 5 can divide 10 two times. So what we have is 31 divided by 2. All right. And I would like to write this 31 divided by 2 as 15.5, right? Because I have other decimals here. So this is 15.5. Yeah, I'm doing all of this in order to minimize space. So let's take these two to the other side. Um, we have 15.5. As 9 crosses over, it becomes negative. So you subtract 9. You also subtract 2.25, right? 2.25. That will give us 4.25. So x minus 4 squared plus y minus 4 also squared equal to 4.25. I have subtracted these two from the other side. Um, but do we have any expression in terms of y? Yes, we do, right? From here. I think we can either make x or y the subject from here. We can do that. Because you can see that this is an equation involving two unknown variables, so we can make it one variable. From here, we can see that, should we use y? Yeah, we can. y will be equal to this minus x, right? 6.5 minus x. So this is x minus 4 squared plus y will be what? 6.5 minus x. 6.5 minus x but minus 4 again everything squared this is equal to 4.25 6 minus 4 will give us 2 but well, we have 0.5 so this is 2.5 minus x x minus 4 squared plus um, 2.5 minus x squared equal to 4.25. Now let us expand. Um, these are binomial terms, right? To the power of 2. So if you take the first term here, you square that, that will give you x squared. You take 2 times this times that. This is going to give you negative 8x. Then this squared will give us 16. We are done with this one. Plus, come here. Um, 2.5 squared, 2.5 squared, this is 6.25, 6.25, then minus 2 times this times that, I don't want to make any mistake, 2.5 times 2, this is going to give us 5x, then lastly we have negative x, all squared will give us positive x squared, everything equal to 4.25. Eventually, we're going to take this one backward. So let me clear the questions. Remember, x is, let me even leave it here. All right, let's collect the like terms. We have x squared, we have another x squared, that will give us what, 2x squared, 2x squared, then those with x, um, we have minus 8, minus 5, that will give us minus 13, right? 
minus 13x. Do we have any other one with x? Only this and that. So the constants, uh, let me use my calculator, 16 plus 6.25. Then if this crosses backward, it becomes negative. So let's subtract it, minus 4.25. What I have here is exactly 18. So plus 18. Everything equal to zero. All right, this is a quadratic equation. Um, we are going to use general formula to solve it. We stated that x is equal to what? Minus b. b is already negative, so it will be 13. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. Okay, that is negative 13 squared. negative 30 squared, then minus 4 times a, a is 2, times c, c is 18. Everything, remember, on that square root, divide by 2a, that is 2 times 2. All right, so let me clear this. Negative 30 squared is 169, but what is 4 times 2 is 8, and eight times, eight times 18 is 144. So 169 minus 144, that will give us 25. So we have 13 plus or minus the square root of 25 divided by four, all right? Square root of 25 is 5, so we have 13 plus or minus 5 divided by 4. 13 plus 5 is going to give us 18, so let me separate them here. Let me separate them here. X is less than Y. This is very important. Uh, you can see the sum of X and Y is 6.5, so let me write it here x plus y is equal to 6.5. So I can now delete everything here. All right, x1, because we have two values of x, we could have 18 divided by 4. Or if you subtract 13 or x1, x2, 13 minus 5 is 8 divided by 4. 8 divided by 4. So let's simplify. What is 18 divided by 4? 18 divided by 4 is 4.5. 4 4.5. And this one will give us 2. So you can see x1 and x2 values are 4.5 and 2. These are the values of x. But we need to find the value of y. We know that y is equal to 6.5 minus what? Minus x. But remember, y is greater. y is greater. So if you take this value here, y will be equal to, okay, y1 will be equal to what? 4.5, no. 6.5 minus the value of x, which is 4.5. 6 minus 4, if you subtract minus, okay, 6 minus 4 is 2, so this is going to give us y1 equal to 2. Then y2 will be 6.5 minus 2. y2 will be equal to 4.5. You can see the same combinations. In y, we have 2 and 4.5. In x, we have 4.5 and 2, the same combinations. But we have seen that x is smaller, y is greater. So you can, can conclude that the values of x and y are, we're going to take the smaller one for x in each combination. So you can see x1, y1. Which one is greater? This is greater, so we are not going to consider this. X2, 
y2 y is greater so we're going to take this so x is 2 y is 4.5 as simple as that now let us move on to question number 14 right yeah it thinks no 13 